It's not every day that you get a truly innovative product released within the videography and photography space, and it certainly isn't every day when that product is a monopod. But YC Onion's carbon fiber monopod known as the Panetta or the MQC-145 might just be one of these unicorns. So in this video, we're going to take a look at the Panetta monopod, discuss what makes it so unique, and also compare it to one of the premier monopod options on the market today. Now for full disclosure, YC Onion sent me this Panetta monopod to do a review on it. No money exchange hands, they do not get any input into this review, nor do they get to see it before I post it, though I do get to keep the monopod as an FYI. So to discuss the specs and features of this monopod, this is a three-section monopod design that ultimately just uses one flip-lock lever to control the full height of the monopod. And in fact, compared to almost any other monopod on the market, this is what's actually going to set the Panetta apart. This single flip-lock design, or the FISO release system as YC Onion calls it, is what's ultimately going to allow you to control the height of the monopod using just a single hand. So yes, starting at the monopod's height of just 29 and a half inches, you can use a single hand to push in the button, flip the flip lock in its upward direction, and then extend the monopod upwards towards its maximum height of 57 inches. Now to talk about just the monopod more specifically, this is the carbon fiber version of it that I received. And while this carbon fiber version weighs in at around 3.7 pounds, YC Onion also does make an aluminum version of the monopod that weighs in at around 4.2 pounds. But of course, to talk about just the monopod itself is only part of the Panetta story here, because this is a very complete monopod design that comes with a bunch of different accessories. That includes a folding articulated tripod base, that includes a ball head, so ultimately you can position the monopod in myriad different ways when it is sitting on the ground, but of course you can also fold the legs up to make it more compact for transport, or just if you want to use the monopod in its more kind of traditional mode. Because yes, the monopod has a set of quick release interlocking threads that allow you to remove the feet and use the monopod in a more traditional sense like you might for photography, and it includes a modular rubber base to facilitate this. Or you can remove the main section of the monopod itself and use it just with its feet and a tripod head to use it in a more standard hi-hat mode. Now ultimately the monopod supports a payload of up to 17.6 pounds. I've been using it throughout this time with a bunch of my different Sony mirrorless cameras in myriad different configurations, and it has accommodated each and every one of them without any issue. Now this monopod did come with a fluid head, which I'll talk about a bit more later, but the top of the monopod has an adaptable quarter 20, 3 8 16 thread that allows you to put on different fluid heads or other types of mounts and accessories of your choice. Now in particular, the package that YC Onion sent me includes not just the main section of the monopod itself, the feet, and the fluid head that I've noted. It also includes an extension tube, which is roughly the same length of the main monopod body design, which will allow you to get a lot more height and leverage out of the monopod if you wanted to use it for some unique setups. And the monopod comes with a set of manuals, a very nice padded carrying case, which yes, easily fits the entirety of the monopod, its head, legs, and the extension pole without any issue, and some nice packaging for what it's worth. So kudos to YC Onion. All right, so let's talk about some of the key features of this monopod in a bit more detail. Now, of course, the FISO system is going to be the thing most people are going to be concerned about, and I will say this is a very impressive and well-designed system. Yes, I will tell you that you can technically adjust this monopod with a single hand, though perhaps with a little bit of help, as you might want to place your foot on one of the feet of the monopod to make it stable when you're trying to adjust the height of it. And of course, if you're using two hands, it's just going to be an easier operation than if you were to use one. I would say the operation of adjusting the height of the monopod is no more or less smooth once you've released that lock than I would notice on any other design. So with the nested design of how this works, I noticed no issues with anything getting stuck or sticking, which is definitely a good thing and an essential one for a monopod design like this. Now that quick release button you press before you use the flip lock on the monopod does actually serve a purpose. This prevents the monopod from sort of self-extending in transport or in any other sort of odd setup configurations. And I will say the flip lock itself is an extra protective one. This is not a case where you can sort of partially flip it and the monopod will start adjusting. You really do have to flip that lock up fully to be able to adjust the height of the monopod. This is both a good thing because you don't want the monopod adjusting itself unintentionally or changing its height when you didn't want it to, but they are a couple slight nuances that maybe put an asterisk on that one-handed design. Now as to the fluid head included with the monopod, I will say that I'm someone that typically uses my own preferred fluid heads with different tripods and monopods, but that said, I was really impressed with this. It's a very smooth operation in terms of facilitating different pans and tilts. You get an easily configurable extension arm that you can place on either side or remove entirely if you so choose. The head itself has a Manfrotto type plate, which can ultimately accommodate most any camera setup, but of course you can adapt other different mount and plate systems such as the 200PL system that I use for most of my Sony cameras. This is definitely a head that can accommodate some weight, and so if you have a larger mirrorless camera kit build out, or even something like a smaller cinema camera setup, I think this could easily be accommodated with the Panetta's head. That said, if you're someone that runs with really small mirrorless camera setups, this head might be a bit too tight on that front, but really this is all just a matter of preference and opinion. I also do have to tout the feet of the monopod because they are a little bit larger than you might expect on most other monopod designs, but as a result of that, it's going to make this monopod very, very stable, which yes, we should talk about some real world 
world use scenarios here. Now, if you've watched my channel before, you might already know that I am a huge fan of monopods, and in fact, weddings might be one of my most common use cases for monopods. And for what it's worth, I did get to use the Panetta on a wedding recently, where throughout the entirety of the day, I made it my main monopod and arguably my main stabilizer option in terms of anything that I used. Ultimately, I found that Panetta did exactly as I wanted a monopod to do on a wedding day. I could use it in sort of a pseudo tripod mode and just get very static, stable shots. That includes with me directly behind the monopod doing slow pans and tilts, but also just being able to sit behind the monopod and use it in a steady upright mode. This is one of the key benefits to a monopod I find in a situation like this, and yes, it totally did the job. But it is worth noting that the monopod that the Panetta replaced on this wedding was the one I would typically use in most cases, and that of course is the iFootage Cobra C182. Now I have a video on this channel already comparing the Cobra 2 to another Manfrotto monopod option that if you haven't checked out yet, I would definitely encourage you to do so. But because the iFootage is my main monopod and sort of the gold standard here, I figured it was worth a deserving comparison to the Panetta. And so let's talk about how the YC Onion Panetta compares to the iFootage Cobra C182. Ultimately, there are actually a lot of similarities between these two monopods. Yes, both of these are carbon fiber monopods, at least in this particular case, with the iFootage coming in at around 2.8 pounds compared to the YC Onion Panetta's 3.7. Both of these are multi-section monopod designs with the Panetta having three sections and the Cobra 2 having four. Of course, the big difference here being the Panetta's single flip lock design versus the Cobra's multiple flip locks that it has throughout the body. They each maintain a very similar closed length height with the Cobra 2 coming in at 27.8 inches and the Panetta coming in at 29.5 inches. That said, you can definitely get a bit more height out of the Cobra 2 compared to the Panetta. As the Cobra 2 goes up to just under 71 inches while the Panetta goes up just a bit over 57 inches. Now, of course, this is mitigated by the extension pole that the Panetta comes with, but if you're looking for a monopod that goes higher without any form of extension, the Cobra 2 would take that. But of course, the similarities don't end there. Both of these monopods have quick release locks that allow you to use them in a hi-hat mode or a more conventional monopod mode as discussed before. And yes, each of these monopods come with a rubber foot that facilitates that more conventional monopod setup as well. They each provide a sense of collapsible feet that provide a sense of stability for the monopod. And each of these feet do have a ball head design that allows the monopod to be used and set up in a bunch of different configurations. Though it's worth noting that the Cobra 2's feet do have three different adjustment sections that they can utilize, whereas the Panettas just have one when they're extended. The top section of the monopods both come with a quarter 20 to 3 8 and 16 adjustable thread. So yes, adapting different fluid heads and accessories on either of these is going to be a pretty similar setup. Each of these monopods handle pretty heavy payloads for their overall size and design, though the Cobra 2 can accommodate just a bit over 22 pounds versus the Panetta's 17.6 pounds, so perhaps another little nod to the eye footage there. And yes, they also do each come with their own padded case. Really, when it comes down to it, these two are extremely similar and almost are a perfect match feature for feature, with one slightly nudging out another here or there depending on your preference or what you're looking for in a specific monopod. In fact, it would be these little nuanced details like the FISO single flip lock for the Panetta, or perhaps the little bit of additional height and payload capacity for the Cobra 2 that might push one person over the edge with a certain model versus the other. But in many cases, if you were comparing these directly side by side, you might not even notice necessarily a huge difference or have a very distinct preference for either. But when you do factor price into the equation, that does become a slightly different story. Now, the Panetta is still in its pre-release state at the time I'm making this video, so prices haven't been finalized here. But for the package that YC Onion sent, me, which includes the carbon fiber monopod, the fluid head, and all the different accessories, technically being the MQC145 FH60, that is expected to retail for around $400 US. Now, if you choose to remove the fluid head from the equation, that price would then go down to around $340 US. And as noted, because yes, there is an aluminum version of the monopod, that will save you, if you do choose that option, around $100 or so. So instead, the aluminum Panetta monopod design with the fluid head costing around $300 US, and the very same design without the fluid head costing around $240 US. Now, these are far from being unreasonable prices for a monopod, but it is worth noting that the iFootage Cobra C182 does edge out this monopod when it comes to price. Because yes, you can get the C182 for around $180 US, or even get iFootage's aluminum version for $150 US. So $180 for the iFootage compared to $340 for the YC Onion for the carbon fiber model, or $150 compared to $240 for each of their respective aluminum models. There definitely is a price difference here, and that probably will be a bigger determining factor, perhaps more than any other thing I've discussed up to this point when folks are considering either of these. But when all is said and done, what do I think about the YC Onion Panetta, and how do I think it stacks up against the iFootage Cobra 2? As I said before, the Panetta is truly a quality monopod that matches the iFootage Cobra 2 feature for feature in almost every single case. 
that is not a statement to gloss over because I really do hold the Cobra 2 in very high regard, and it has been my gold standard monopod for a number of years now, and in fact, I own two of them. But if I were to make the call on purchasing one of these from scratch, I think that would actually be a really tough call. For me personally, I'm not very picky with monopod height, and I'm usually not pushing it to its most extreme lengths. And the same very much is true also on the payload side, using it with more standard mirrorless camera kits. So the extra 14 inches or so of height and the added 5 pounds of payload that the Cobra 2 has, while they are a nice benefit, probably wouldn't be a difference maker in my case. And while I do really think the engineering and design of the FISO flip lock on the Panetta is very sleek and provides a lot of unique benefits, I also don't really find myself overburdened with the task of using two hands to adjust the locks on the Cobra 2. So it's tough to say that a single flip lock design, while convenient, would be a difference maker for me in picking up a monopod there. In fact, perhaps more than anything, it could be cost that becomes the ultimate factor. I truly do think Weiss Youngin have done an excellent job with this monopod, and if you are willing to spend a little bit more to get a best of breed design and engineered monopod, this might be the one to get. Of course, if cost is really a big issue for you and you don't find yourself overburdened by using two hands to adjust the monopod, then that might push you more in the Cobra 2's direction. But when it really comes down to it, I don't think you can go wrong with either of these monopods. So that is my take on the YC Young and Panetta monopod. Hopefully this video has been of some help to you. Feel free to leave a like and subscribe if it has. I have a number of videos around monopods and tripods on my channel already that I would definitely encourage you to check out if you haven't yet. And yes, there will certainly be more on the way, so stay tuned for those. For now, that is all I have to say, so thanks for watching.